Hey guys, in this video we're going to assemble your clutch bag or your little case depending on which one you choose to make and I'm first going to go through all the items that you'll receive in your kit. First up will be clear stuff, so you will receive 10 grams of clear stuff in your kit. Then you will also receive your side panels. So these pieces will be put together to create the strength and put the sides of your clutch together. So you've got the thin ones and the more, the more solid um, looking ones. Um, so you'll have those and I'll show you how to put those together. Then you're also going to have your glue. So for the glue in this little jar, I'm actually giving you Gorilla Wood glue. So I'm giving you the good stuff to make sure that your clutch lasts a very, very long time. And then you're also going to have your findings. Now for the findings, you would have chosen between silver, gold or gunmetal. These are the silver ones that I've got for this one. And we're going to add this to the side panel pieces um, when we assemble them. Then you're also going to have your design piece. For this clutch, I'm going to do the initial one. So this is initial with some florals, but it depends which ones you've chosen. And you're also going to have your shimmer watercolor paint palette, uh, depending on which uh, palette color you've chosen. And then you're going to have your magnets. Now you will receive four magnets and they will be used to close the clutches with two different sizes. You're going to have a uh, 12 millimeter and then a 10 millimeter size and one is thinner than the other, but I'll show you guys where those need to go on to your little clutch. Then of course, last but not least, you'll have the bigger piece which will be folded over with that live hinge to then create your clutch. And you will also receive a booklet with this one so that you can follow with step by step and you can make some notes in it if you wanted to as well. So let me show you all the tools that you'll need to assemble your craft kit. For the glues, I've already shown you the Gorilla Wood glue that's in your little container, but you can of course buy some more if you wanted some more of those. And then I'm using some different glues for different pieces. I use the E6000 um, or you can use the Gorilla glue to attach the design pieces. I just use the E6000 or the Gorilla Super Glue just to make sure that they stay intact. And the Super Glue I use for the magnets because they are strong magnets and I don't want them to go anywhere or to pop out. Then for coloring, what you can use is some wood stain or you can use some varnish. It is uh, plywood, so you can paint that to give a more wooden effect. And then you can also use acrylic paint. I just use acrylic paint to add color to mine. Um, I, you can use the Pabo, the Dollar, Dollar Rowley, or you can also just get away with um, these small bottles from Hobbycraft. But yes, you can use just normal acrylic paint on these. If you're going to use acrylic paint, you want to seal it and you can use this crystal clear. I use the clear matte sealant. I just bought mine off Amazon. There's also a gloss one if you wanted to have a gloss finish to your clutch or your case. You also want to have a, a little dish for your water, for your watercolor paints um, to wet your brush. A brush, of course, to use with your watercolors and then a sponge. The sponge I use to color in the actual main piece of the clutch. It's better than using the bristles or bristle brush because the bristles will put the paint in the live hinges and you don't want that to stop them working. Then I also have a Sharpie at hand, that's to mark my magnets to make sure I put the right side down. And then you need some clips to keep your side panels together while the glue dries. And then I use some elastics when I put the whole piece together just to keep it together until the glue dries properly. And then a toothpick or you can use your finger just to spread the glue onto the pieces as well. I use this little container and you can also just use a little ramekin um, but I dilute my acrylic paint in this and then shake it with some water because uh, it just keeps a smoother finish rather than a thick streaky finish. So this is everything that you'll need to so go grab your goodies and let's start with the assembly. I'm going to try and do this assembly step by step that will save you some time and there will be some adjustments to it. The booklet has all the new steps in it but I will point this out to you as we go along with this one. So grab all of your side panel pieces and um, your clips and then you're also going to grab your glue because obviously we're going to need that to assemble these pieces. So grab your glue and you can open your little jar and put it to the side. For the side panel pieces, you want to make sure that you stick the skinny side on the side that's got like the bigger engraved hole because that's where the little screw is going to slot into. And then you'll just need to line it up properly and straight and then stick it on. So first grab the glue and your toothpick and then just make sure that you get some glue over this hole. I'm going to call it the skinny piece. So get some glue on this one.
Once you have enough glue on, we're going to assemble two of the pieces together to pick up your bigger panel piece. And that was the right one, and this one is not the right one. Um, and then you're just going to line it up again. Just make sure that engraved bigger hole at the top is facing you. Then just line it up nicely. And once you've got it lined up and you're happy with that, you're going to grab your clips and then just pop the clips on now you can put something heavy on it but i would recommend against it because i did that with the first one and then it kind of shifted with the glue and it was a, a mission and i couldn't use an eye to remake it so use the clips instead and then put that to the side and do the exact same for the other one and then we're going to um, move on with those then so go ahead and do the same and once both of them are done we're now just going to put them aside to dry and I would say at least half an hour for them to dry before you continue. Now you can go ahead and grab your big panel. Now you can leave this big panel just this um, raw color if you wanted to. Um, it does look nice and I have no problem with that. Or you can just go ahead and color it. So this one is the one that I've used varnish on. So you can use any color of uh, varnish or wood stain on it. And this one is just plain black acrylic 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 paint that i've added to this one um, and then you just need to make sure that you don't get the paint in those grooves so that they the life hinges still work so first we're going to paint this one i'm going to use the black acrylic paints and like i showed you guys earlier i just use this little jar and i add some paint into it you can see i've had this i've literally used this little jar for three years now already with um with black paint back in the day when i did the key rings so I'm just going to add some paint and make a mess, of course, because, you know, that's what us crafters do. And um, we just give it a good old shake and then try again and get some paint in there. So I'm just going to add enough in. It doesn't really take a lot of paint to cover the whole piece. And I'm just adding literally just some tap water in there. I'm going to pop the lid back on again and then I'm just going to shake it until that is mixed well you can of course like i said do it in a little jar as well if you want to once that is done i'm just going to put something underneath the piece so that i don't paint my background because i know i'm going to make a mess and i'm using the sponge and i'm literally just going to dip the brush into the, or the sponge into the paint and then brush that on now make sure that you don't put too much paint on the hinges because you want those live hinges to still work so go ahead and paint the whole piece and then i will be back now that the whole piece is painted we obviously need to wait for this one to dry so i'm just going to put that to one side so that can dry and then we'll move on with the next piece so now you're going to use the side panels and we're going to paint those. They would have been lying to the side for about half an hour before I actually take those clips off. So if you are a lot quicker than me, then just leave them for a little bit longer for at least half an hour. You can remove the clips of these and then we are going to paint them with a the black paint as well. You can go on the top edges, um, actually grab some paint D and then you can paint. Um, so just go on the edges and then on the inside and just make sure that you get it in all the nooks and crannies and you can go ahead and paint both of those pieces with your color now that those are painted we are obviously going to need to leave those to dry as well so i've done the one side and then i'll paint the other side and let them dry i'm going to go back to my bigger piece now again and i'm going to do the same as what i've done before and i'm just going to paint the other side black as well because i want both the inside and the outside to be the same color you can of course do it whichever way you want to you can make it two different colors if you wanted to now before i put this one to side to dry i'm actually going to drop the magnets in on it and i really should have done it for the other side first but if you follow the steps in the booklet you will I, yeah be careful because they do snap they are really strong magnets i wanted to make sure you guys have the good ones um so yes so uh follow the steps in the booklet and you'll have the right steps to put the magnets in but we're going to use in the um side that will be the bottom side of the clutch i'm going to put the magnets in and that will be the bigger magnets and i'm going to use the gorilla super glue i don't know how to explain it but you'll see there'll be two different sizes 
um, and they will fit exactly into the hole. So you can't, well, you can get it wrong, but don't get it wrong. <laughs> Just add some of the glue into the little holes. And for these um, magnets, the first ones that you put down, doesn't matter which side they go, because we're going to check it when we put the second set of magnets on. So just drop them into that Gorilla Gel and um, the Super Glue Gel stuff and um, then just press them in to make sure that they fit nicely and then you can put the whole lot to one side so the glue can dry properly because you don't want those magnets to snap out. And while that dries we're going to get some painting done. Now in your craft kit you would have been able to select which designs you wanted. Um, you would have either selected the initial with the floral or you can have the little tools one. So I've got small tools that I use and I made a case for that. I made a case for my glasses and I, I made this cute little design for my glasses case. You can also use one for makeup. So this is a little compact uh, makeup thingy with some flowers and you can also use it as a little pencil case. And that one is for pencil case. But those are the different designs, but for this one, we're going to go ahead and do the floral design. Now you're going to grab your paint palette and it just depends on which palette you've chosen. We've got the floral one that is available for the kit or we've got the metal one. Um, or you might have some of my other paint palettes and you can use any of the watercolor shimmer paints or you can use other paints if you wanted to. Um, but we're going to use my shimmer paints for this one. Now this is my palette. It's obviously very well used and I'm just going to use that same colors but on my palette. Now to activate your paint, all that you want to do is just use your paintbrush and just drop some paint, some, some paint on the water, some water on the paint, and that will just kind of dissolve and soften the paint. Now I would suggest leaving it for about a minute before you start swirling your brush in it. And when that's when you've left it to the side, you can take your brush and swirl it around in it. Now, when you paint it on, you want to have a nice cover. So you don't really want to see the wood grain. You want to make sure that it's a nice and solid color. So just mix it around until you find that the color is nice and solid. And then you can go ahead and um, paint all the pieces that you want to do in that specific color. I normally do them by color so that I don't um, have to re-wet the paint again. Then once that is done, you can go ahead and do all the different pieces. So you can do the leaves and then the little um, berry pieces as well. And then you can also do some shading. So I just zoomed in on this piece for you to show you that I'm just dropping in some uh, darker color paint into the places where I want to add some shading. Then I'm going to rinse off my brush first before I actually try and blend those in because I don't want to drag more paint around and then it just becomes a dark blob. And I just wiped it off on my arm there just to make sure that I don't have too much water on it either. And then you can see I just lightly touch it and it kind of blends in nicely. And there you go, there's the whole piece done and I've done the center piece uh, with the D in I've done in the white paint. Now we can go ahead and put the whole clutch together so grab all of your pieces and then your elastics and then also your findings and we'll do these all in one step and of course your glue don't forget the glue guys right so we're going to attach the findings first so just drop the screw in the little larger hole side of the side panels and then screw the finding onto the other side now you won't need any tools to do this it is easy enough just to hold that screw in place with your finger and then just turn around the finding piece and tighten that onto the side and then you can straighten it so it's nice and straight so go ahead then and do the other side with this as well now that your findings are attached we're going to put the whole thing together so first of all we need to glue one of the sides so we're going to do one edge and then we'll let that dry and then we'll do the other side um, if you follow the steps in the booklet, you will see that you need to put all four magnets in um, at, at the same time. Put all four magnets in before you get to this stage. It will really help. Now you need to just make sure that you put the piece down um, with the magnets facing the boss. So the bigger magnets needs to face your workspace and the rounder edges needs to be at the top of the piece hope that makes sense just make sure that you lie down the way that i've put it down in this um, video 
Then we're going to line up that side panel piece. You will see that it will fit nice and square on the edge there, but we obviously need to add some glue to it and we need to make sure that we get enough glue on. Now, when you add the glue, you don't need to worry about the glue spilling over the edges. The glue will dry clear. So even if it does squeeze out or spill out, um at the end of it you're not going to see it anyway so don't worry too much about that so just grab your glue and then just make sure that you get enough glue over the whole piece on all the sides and now this is where everything starts to take proper shape now that your glue is on the side piece you can move closer glue so it doesn't dry and then we're going to attach the pieces together now keep your elastics at hand because you're going to put those over the edge to make sure it stays in place until it's dried grab your piece and lift up your panel piece so you want to grab the bottom corner move it around and then you want to fit it nicely onto the edge into that straight side Make sure that you get it nice and level so it's not wonky. Take your time here. The glue doesn't dry immediately, which gives you some time to just space it properly, as you can see I'm doing over here. And I'm just squeezing it, making sure that it's nice and tight. And the glue goes in between those little live hinge pieces there. And then I'm going to close it. Now, this is where the magnet would have held everything in place if I did all four magnets, um, but I didn't. Um, still go ahead and then just put an elastic around the edge. I'm just going to point out that you need to make sure the elastic is right on the edge. So it's not like on the middle. It needs to be right on that edge to keep it nice and tight. And then just wipe away any of that excess glue that has um, come through the little edge. And there we go, that's one side down. So we're gonna put that away and let it dry. And while that dries, we're going to use our nail light and our clear stuff, and we're going to add some definition to our pieces. Now, this light is honestly the best light that I have ever used, and I will continue to um, say that. This is not promoted or sponsored, and um, I will pop the link in the description of the video. It's also not an affiliate link, so um, go grab that one if you guys want to do it. It's inexpensive, and it is a really good light. Right, sounds like an ad, but it's not an ad. I should get paid for that, but I don't. Anywho, going to grab my clear stuff and I'm just using the one of my bauble blanks, my acrylic blanks, because it's nice and um, just the right shape for me to hold on to while I do the uh, clear stuff onto the piece. And I'm just gonna pop a little bit of clear stuff onto that acrylic piece. So I'm going to use it basically as a little palette and then i'm going to lift up my design piece and then use the toothpick to drop in some clear stuff on the piece i always start with the smaller pieces first uh, you can go straight in with your clear stuff from the bottle on the bigger pieces um, i just prefer to do the smaller pieces first but each to their own uh, this is just the way that i'm doing it if you do the flor flowers the florals the flower petals one by one you will it takes a little bit longer but it creates a better like it gives it more definition so if you run your fingers over them they are they literally look like separate petals as well when you look at them when it's in your hand on the video you can never see it i'm just going to nuke that for 10 seconds so the 10 seconds won't actually cure it properly but it will just nuke it for a little bit just to keep the clear stuff in space in in space in place so that i can add some more onto that so go ahead go around your design and add some definition now this is the one that i've finished already and you can see i've even done the white in the center and just making sure that that didn't run into the letter and it's so freaking stunning and it just gives that extra dimension now for the back here time saver and this is why i say watch the video first in full or read your booklet in full you need to paint that actually right in the beginning already with all the other pieces i didn't you can of course if you get to this part and you need to paint it just paint it it just means that you need to wait for the that paint to dry which if you did it right in the beginning you didn't have to wait at this stage but there we go that's what I did so I'm just going to paint the back and then I'm going to go back to the piece it's now been about half an hour since I've left it to one side to dry so one side is done and then we're just going to add the other side as well now I'm going to paint this edge so that it, you can't see the wood there it will just be nice and plain black once I've finished painting it 
Next up is to add the other side and you're basically going to follow the exact same process guys. Grab your glue, grab your side panels, add some glue onto the side panels and then we're just going to place them in, in, in pla place them in place. You know what I mean, put them in the right space, place. <laughs> So now that we've got the glue on the whole piece, we're going to slot it in again with that right edge to the one side, making sure that I do have it nice and level. We can move it around a bit still because the glue is still waiting. You see glue seeps out, but not to worry because it's going to dry clear anyway, but I'll wipe the excess away. Um, just making sure that it's nice and flat and flush. And once I'm happy with that, I'm just going to add the elastic again right to the edge not anywhere to the middle right on the edge of this one to help strengthen and make sure the glue dries properly and then i'll just wipe off the excess glue there and i will paint that edge again as i've done now it's been half an hour and this is the beauty of video and and um, being able to stop recording and then start recording but it's at least been half an hour and now my whole piece is together it still will need to dry overnight so don't uh, make it and go out it might fall apart but all I'm going to do now is add in my magnets to the other sides. Like I said, it's better if you do this previously. And now the biggest tip I want to give you guys when you do your magnets to make sure that you've got the right size together, pop the magnets on the other side so you can see which side needs to go down and then make a cross on top so that you know that's the side that needs to go down. This one here I put down the wrong way around and the two pushed the two magnets pushed apart and it didn't actually close my clutch and I had to remove it after the glue dried. Um, so just make sure that you mark it. So if you put it on top and then mark the top and with an X with your Sharpie and then just put that X needs to go into the wood, then you'll be fine and you won't have um, the mistake that I've made. I'm just going to put mine to the side now so that the um, glue can dry with the magnets and voila, power video again. They are all dried and my clutch is now nicely assembled. All that's left to do now is to add the beautifulness. Um, so you can use that E6000, the, super, the Gorilla Super Glue, or just the wood glue to add the pieces on. I'm just using a piece of white tack on this one because I want to show you guys the different designs. But there you go. So you add that to the front and then depending on what you want to do with the sides. For this one, I had the gold um, shoulder strap for this one. So I'm just going to clip that onto the edges. And you can buy these off Amazon. It's nothing special, really. They are dime a dozen on Amazon because there's so many different options. I didn't want to include one with the craft kit. I thought I'll leave that to you guys so you can go choose your own ones. But yeah, so once you have the strap attached, then you are left with a beautiful little clutch. And you can make these for gifts and give them away as gifts. Or you can even make one for a special occasion. It's really up to you what you want to do with them but I think they're perfect because you can personalize them it's a workable functional art piece of yours and you can go out and be proud of them so just want to show you guys some of the other designs um, that you can do with these because I've gone ahead and painted all the different designs so I'm just going to pop this one off and then we'll pop some of the other ones on so I can show you so you can either use that uh, for a little glass case. So I'm actually using one of mine for a glass case. So I think it's perfect. And I use the glasses design on that one. I actually don't have the shoulder straps on that one for myself. I've just removed the, the shoulder straps. And on the one side, I didn't put a fitting in. Um, the finding in, sorry, I should say. And I just left it in on the other side. And then I clasped on a little wristband. Again, these are available on Amazon and they dime a dozen. So you can go choose any which one that will work for you. So I just clip that on and there you go. Now I've got a glasses case to keep my glasses nice and safe. And there they go in perfectly. It's obviously not the right size for sunglasses, but for my glasses, it is absolutely perfect. And they look gorgeous and it's a nice show of peace and a conversation starter. 
I hope you guys enjoyed assembling your little clutch or your case, whichever one you decide to make. And if you enjoyed this video, please do hit a like and a subscribe on the video. It's always very helpful. If you want to grab your own craft kit, the link will be in the description below, which will take you to my website and you can order your craft kit. Hope to see you guys in the next video. Enjoy crafting, guys. See you next time.